A at Crew Stadium in Columbus. It's disturbed in the original Misfits and Pantera and Slipknot and Anthrax and Sleep Token and many, many, many more. SonicTempleFestival.com for all the info. I got general admission weekend stadium passes for you all weekend long. For caller 10, good luck. 216 578 1007 or 800 348 1007. Welcome back. Local DJ and all around female <laughs> orgasm denier, Alan Cox. This is the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Okay, hey, we got a pound cake sports break in about one hour. We do that on Wednesdays. If you're new to the program, you're about to find out why he was voted best sports talker in Cleveland by the readers of Cleveland Scene Magazine um, in about an hour. And I'll have more money for you here in about eight minutes. 4.30 is the next chance for you uh, to grab $1,000, courtesy of the buzzard bookie. Cavaliers tonight, they're in D.C. to play the 9-40 and 40 Washington Wizards. Uh, only the Detroit Pistons are worse than the Wizards right now. But they might have a hell of a night tonight. Cavs have won 14 of their last 15 games. Wizards may stop that streak. We'll see what happens tonight. I'd really like them to not do that. You don't want them to throw the Wizards a bone? No. Well, if the Wizards, they're going to have to live up to their name to make tonight work for them. Thus far, that hasn't been the case. But Cavs Wizards, live from D.C. on your FM home for Cleveland Cavaliers basketball, 100.7 WMMS. 7 o'clock, tip off tonight. 6.30 when we get going is when your pregame will begin. And then the Cavs will be off to Brooklyn to play the Nets right in Mary Santora's backyard. You. Yeah. And then they'll head north of the border to play the Raptors on Saturday before they come back home to host Philly on Monday night. Speaking of Cleveland Scene Magazine, my goodness, the news that it was just given to me in the break. I can... I'm so surprised this didn't happen sooner. Yeah. <laughs> They have closed BD's Mongolian Grill in Coventry after nearly 30 years. I don't know if you've been there recently. Holy cow. It was gross. Yeah, I haven't been there in about 10 years because it was kind of gross then. It's my dad's favorite restaurant. BD Mongolian Grill? Not even joking. That's the only place he ever wanted to go for, like, birthdays and Father's Day and stuff. I can't figure out why they can't manage to keep these places open. There used to be when, when my... Because they Older. get so gross because people are s- shoveling raw meat with a spoon onto their plate, and it's, it's just no way. Right, but that's all. But that's always been the case, and they were killing it for a long time. When they could pay people less and keep up with all the, I don't know. I imagine they go through employees all the time. I there. mean, there was when my older kids were little; they were growing up in Southwest Michigan, and I was going to visit them all the time. And invariably, we would be having, like, breakfast at IHOP or something. And right next door was a Beatty's Mongolian Grill. And one day it just closed. I'm like, why is nobody going to this place? And then around here, I don't know if there were – I'm sure there might have been more at some point. I know there's a couple around Columbus. But the only one I was ever familiar with is the one over in Coventry. And so, like, last time we were there was probably a couple years ago. Gwen and I went to the Tommy Cash show at the Grog Shop, and we went to – Mongolian grill beforehand, and I was like, wow, this place has gone taking a nosedive. Just in the short period of time, the couple of years between when we were there before, and it was just, I was like, what is going on here? So, uh, the Mongolian grill since 1992 is closing up shop. They were doing a temper, you know, they'll put up a sign, they'll say, hey, temporary closure for repairs and renovations. Not renovations, but they, I guess they had a sign up that said they were closed temporarily for repairs. They never reopened. Somebody who worked there said, no, we're closed for good. There are four left in Ohio, two of which are in the greater Columbus area. But, yeah, back in the day, I don't know what they did differently, but it was pretty legit. Like, you could go, and you'd throw crap into a bowl, and you'd throw it to the guy, and he'd cook, and it was pretty good. 
and it wasn't like they had competition. They were kind of the only place doing that, at least at the chain level. You know, there's mom and pop restaurants that'll take a stab at that, but all at once. I never liked the stuff where I have to choose because I'm not a good cook. So I don't right. trust what I That's like. That's why I'm here. I just go. <laughs> you do it oh, for I me. Like all, I like all these things, but all those things don't go well together. So then you get like a weird concoction. And you're like, oh, I, I got the wrong sauces. And so I'd rather just uh, have, have somebody that knows what they're doing. Make my food but for they, me. But that's why they gave you the handy-dandy recipe cards. Hey, do yeah, you but like they get this? the pressure because like... there's people behind you, and you're just trying to. I, pressure? I always felt pressure in those situations. Because really? it's always busy as hell when I would Right. Go. But everybody's in the same boat. Mm. Like, nobody knows what they want. Unless, you know, you. you... I don't know. It always, it, it was always underwhelming. Okay. I'd rather go, if I'm doing a birthday, like uh, this Saturday I'm having dinner with my parents. We're doing hibachi. Hibachi's a good birthday Love dinner. Hibachi. Yeah, I, that's you always little, you get a little. You have a little fun because you know they're they're flicking broccoli into your mouth and stuff like that now. And right, it's a good time. I always they suggest hibachi too, thing. but I feel like we might have over hibachi'd it for a minute. We're taking a break from the hibachi. Oh, you've been hibachiing a lot. Well, How like many hibachi. When have you we done? have, there's a place near us, and so when we have. Like the in-laws in town or something. It's fun for our daughter. It's great. We can all sit there together. And so I just reflexively go, hey, we should go here. And Gwen's like, we've gone there a lot. Let's figure something else out. I'm like, okay. I get it. Yeah. It's just the first thing that comes to mind. I'm I'm like once or twice a year with hibachi. But they're not shooting sake into your parents' mouths. No, but they'll shoot water. Oh, yeah? Or I mean, lemonade. They yeah. give in, like, pink lemonade. They yeah. do that for the kids. Out of the little kid that, that's coming, it's uh, peeing. It's like the no, little boy fountain. They, they don't, don't have do, the thing. They don't do that. They, that's that's just for a laugh, but usually it's just a different spray bottle. Oh. Like Mary said, with, like, either sake or pink lemonade or something like that. Where we go, it's got the little kid peeing out the lemonade. I, I've seen that, but I've never <laughs> seen them doing that into somebody's mouth. <laughs> That's why it's yeah. a little weird, especially mm-hmm. if the person into whose mouth they're doing it is seven years old. But, uh, all right, well, that'll be fun. Just you and the rents? The and three the, of you? And my girlfriend, yeah. And your girlfriend. Uh-huh. Is she meeting them for the first time? Yeah. Oh, this no, is actually, a get-to-know-you dinner. No, I actually reserved two tables. <laughs> no, no, no. She sits alone. <laughs> and so I'm going to I'm be running back and forth, being like, oh, I got to go wash my hands. Oh, I forgot my phone in the bathroom. I'll be right back. This is going to be fun. Well, no, I don't know if she's met them. No, she hasn't met them. Not that she's on the other side of the restaurant, but has she met them before was no, my question. No, no. Okay. And she'll never meet them again. So this is the first time they're all meeting each other. Right. Wow. Is that a is that a big move? I don't care. You don't care? <laughs> I don't care. But like, you're introducing your girlfriend to your parents. My fifth girlfriend in seven years. <laughs> They well, <laughs> oh, do you introduce every one of them to your parents? I mean, at, at some point or another, they usually run Oh, you into do? Them. Yeah, let's see. Okay, well, that's why I ask. I, think I, the only one I don't I... assume you're introducing every one of these, whatever revolving door you got going on. I don't imagine they're all at some point sitting down with your parents for dinner. I think the only one that didn't meet them was you know better, but she did eventually meet them because she was the realtor for my sister when she sold her house. So, so she met your parents that way? That way, yeah. <laughs> Did they know she was the girl screaming at you on the voicemail? Yeah. They go, oh, you're the screaming mm-hmm. crazy girl. Oh. They're always like, we can't believe you put up with Bill no matter what. So, like, it's, you know. Does that sound like somebody who put up with you? It's, you're f***ing no better! I mean, at that point, a, at that, that sounds point, like somebody who's not she, putting up with you. That, that was, She was trying to get back with me at that moment. So. Right there? Yeah. Don't you she remember would, the story? Uh, vaguely, but I don't understand why she was trying to get back I, with you. Because I'm a cat. I don't know. I honestly, I don't get it either. I, I, women always fall for me real hard, and I. I Mary, cover your ears. No, it's fine. But I don't you want know, you. I don't you know want you to do. I don't I want do. you to fall prey do. to his charms, Mary. Cover your ears. Nothing in the world can make me fall prey to those. She's and trying to warn entirely you. Entirely too well. That girl is trying to warn you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I broke up with her. And then, um, she said, "You know better than to break up with me, because I'll boil a rabbit in your pot." Then, she, then fri- that was on Wednesday. And then Friday, she got drunk and was calling me, and I think I was also drunk. And I was just like, "Fine, then come over." And then she came over, and I passed out in my bed, 
and she was trying to get in, and so she started leaving me yeah. voicemails. Lots she of thought voicemails. you were blowing her off. Yeah. You f***ing know better! Meaning what? You know better than to blow me off? Yeah, something like that. Right, because I'll throw a rock through your window. or well, She's throwing like little pebbles to try and get my attention. <laughs> oh, so it was more like a Romeo and Juliet type situation. Yeah, I was saying, just trying to get oh, back together. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Mm-hmm. And so did you guys get back together after that? Oh, we hooked up a few more times, and then uh, and then there was the time. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let me give away the money. Hold that thought. It's a 1000 bucks from the Buzzard Book. About this, <laughs> this is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Pay. That's pay. Enter it now at WMMS.com. So... We kind of like she she kept coming over and hanging out. She let me play the voicemail on the air. Like we talked about that, got a, uh, consent and everything uh, for that. And we were hanging out for a little bit. And then I, I, just, I was like, hey, I don't want to be in a relationship. And she's like, okay, but can we still see each other? I was like, fine. And then we had a bar crawl over at the east bank of the flats. Remember uh, the one? Uh, a show bar crawl? Yeah. It was the one where we were giving that bike away. Okay. So I knew a girl that was staying in the Aloft Hotel that night. And then I was like, okay, so I'm going to go hook up with this girl at, after the bar crawl, and that, that'll that be fun. Because you know better girl was like, we're not going to be a thing. Well, I told her we're not going to be a thing. You, you said but we're not going to be a thing. She, but she was like, okay, whatever. But then I start getting these Snapchats from, like, some girl just, like, adds me on Snapchat, and I'm This is how long her. ago it was. This is, yeah, this is 2000. 16 snapchat yeah so so she this girl is just sending me these snapchats and they're like nudes and stuff like this that. is the girl in the hotel no this is a different girl that i didn't even know she just added me on snapchat and it's like hey i like you i want to hook up with you and i was like okay i'm here are you cool with hooking up with me and another girl and she's like yeah and i was like sweet that's that's the situation that i'm in right now so if you want to come hang out with us we're in this room at this hotel at the hotel gotcha and this is a girl you didn't even know. This is a girl I didn't it's even know. She Snapchat finds girl. you on Snapchat and says, because it, it has like a radius or like grinder. Like no, she, I just put my Snapchat name was public. Like you could find me. But she was At close Hugo enough to it. you yeah. that goes, I, I, I've never met you before. But she knew me from the show or whatever. Like whatever. But you had never met her. I had never met her. Right. I didn't recognize She knows her. you. You don't know her. Yeah. And she just sent me nudes. And then what I realized is she was just sending me her body, I didn't see her face because when she knocked on the door, I opened it up and it was the ex. And she had catfished me on Snapchat. It was and the screaming girl? Yeah. And she yeah. goes, I just wanted to see if you were really who th- this person. I was like, What? I was like, Yeah, sure am. What was the point of that? I don't know. She was just feeling a certain type of way and she had to. I don't know. That's how that's how she was able to Are you move sure on. This was at a bar crawl because I yeah. was there for this. I think I had a hotel room too. Was this was this not at Pride? No, this was a separate. The, the this boat motorcycle. It was might have been no, because I, I I think no, because Pride I, was already done at this point. Well, after you, because this is like because I broke up with her in July and this is like August. This is a bar crawl. But what I'm what saying bar? is, oh, I think I remember this bar. night because you came up to my room after, like, you knocked on my door. You're like, you're never gonna believe what just happened. This no. wasn't the superhero bar crawl. No, because that okay. was during the day. Yeah, that's the that's the bar crawl that I think the superhero. No, that's a different because why? Why would you have a hotel room <laughs> okay. for a bar crawl? You're losing track. What? Why would you have a hotel room for? A I bar didn't crawl? have a hotel room. This girl had a hotel room. Okay. He was gonna meet her up. Yeah, okay. and I think you had a hotel room because I think your gays had one. I. Well, that's the only. Way oh I no! It was it was the gays that you used to live with the the second, ter- the second the second, second tour. Couple. Yeah, Josh and uh, his and Ron. Yeah, they were staying in my hotel room. I had a hotel room. That's why. I, okay. I think All right. Well, because I know I didn't pay for it. <laughs> maybe maybe it wasn't even them. It, but uh, whatever happened, she 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 knocks on or she knocks on the door. I open the door. I see it's her, and I was like, Were they ah. picture? Were they pictures of her actual body? Yeah. Okay. And, and she's you didn't like, recognize it though. And she's like, you didn't even recognize it. I'm like, well, I'm looking at it real quick while I'm doing other stuff. Like, I'm not like paying it. And, you know, it wasn't. They were like quick. You know how Snapchat has like a countdown. Like, I wasn't. I was getting a lot of nudes at that time. Yeah. So, 
hard to keep it all straight. It was a wild, it's a wild summer. But I don't understand the point of summer. that. I didn't really. She just wanted to see what I was up to. Guess I guess. Like see, see how wild I really was. Right. And so the aftermath of that was she just walked away. Well, she like tried to come in. And I was like, this isn't even my room. You can't like. I don't think you should come in here. Uh, and then I told the other girls like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Like it kind of was a vibe. Killer. I'm gonna bounce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna get an Uber and go home. Uh, <laughs> have, have a good night. Wow. So uh, nothing happened. You got catfished by a girl you were dating for no reason, and you go home. Well, we had a round before she got there, so like I, I still had fun. I see. Okay. Yeah. It all worked out. Yeah. Okay. That was the last girl to meet your parents. No. No, that's the only girl that didn't. She didn't meet my parents till later, oh. till we reconnected and became friends again. I see. And then she was Mary, my, you're awfully quiet during this thing. My ex wife. <laughs> then she also, was. Also, this is not the, the first time I'm hearing all of this. She was the, then my uh, my my sister's realtor. Okay. She sold oh, she's a realtor. Moved, okay. Yeah, when she moved to uh, mm-hmm. Houston. Okay. Now, would she send people photos of houses, but just not the roof? <laughs> no, she's a very professional realtor. This is before she was even a realtor the, when we were dating. She wasn't a realtor when you were dating. Right. Gotcha. I actually pushed her in that direction. She followed her dream. She was just getting started in realty. Uh, Wait, you you had to push her into her dream? That's right. <laughs> I inspire people. In the way that you inspired Mary to start using sex toys in her God. lovemaking with Brian? I hate this. Exactly. <laughs> I gotta go. I'm. I just got the spot. I gotta leave right now. Yeah. What happened last night? Your thing got canceled. Dude. Yeah. What I happened? Got a text. I don't know what happened. I got a text at my spot was at the show was at ten, and I got a text at like where was it? At the stand. Oh. Okay. I got a text at like eight forty five that was like, "Hey, we're not doing a show tonight. It's the ten p.m. show's canceled." But then I saw on people's social media that they were at the ten p.m. show. That was one so, of your. That was one of your scheduled spots. Yes. Your avails. So, I don't know if they just bumped me off of it or if they had, because Tim Dillon. Maybe Gaffigan uh, came in. He did. <laughs> Jim Gaffigan and Tim Dillon both dropped in. So oh. I'm wondering if maybe they just had a show run long or something. I don't know. Okay. But yeah. All right. Which was a bummer. But so I stayed in and unpacked a box of, that was labeled memories, that has been moved at least six or seven times. Gotcha. And so I was digging through that and got most of my room set up, but. Yeah, I was bummed. You know, hmm. I wanted I want to do stand up. That's why I'm here. You know, I don't like shows getting canceled. Understood. I thought, I thought you moved there for the ribs. I did not because the ribs are bad, or at least the ones I had today were like bad ribs. ribs. Like most ribs, but mm-hmm. you have shows tonight. I don't. I have one tomorrow. Does that mean you're going to be unpacking more memories tonight? No, I'm pretty much unpacked. I was going to go hang out at actually the stand. They're doing um, auditions for Netflix tonight. Well, don't look thirsty, Mary. What? I'm just going to go hang <laughs> out. I'm probably going to know. I actually don't know if I'm going to know a lot of people there, but um, they have two audition shows that are showcases. So I was like, I figured I would probably know people there. Mm-hmm. I'm just go hang. I haven't been around comics in, you know, over a week because I've been moving everything. So, But I have a set there tomorrow night, too. Or my friend is hosting at New York Comedy Club. I mm-hmm. might go there. I don't know. Possibility. You got there. options. Got options. Hey, sorry, Mr. Call. Um, I was calling you back to. Uh, this is one of your old you voicemails, right, Bill? I, I love you. I wish. And I miss you. <laughs> she would have got me back. <laughs> and that I know you're done. So, so when you get this, can you call me back? <laughs> I love you, and I miss you. Hmm. 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 I'm going to break here. If you want to send me a text, 35192, com for all the other stuff, and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 W.